So there is a little bit of unfinished business. So this, this is just a supplemental video uh, on the uh, noise canceling. Uh, that original passive noise canceler that I built way back in 2012, 2013, um, without a lot of knowledge, you know, it, it does work. So you might remember I kind of glossed over this passive noise canceller at the beginning of the series. And uh, that's where we started. And I really didn't give it a good look. Um, this thing is quite amazing. And uh, I guess I didn't realize it at the time, back in 2012-2013 uh, when I built this thing up actually for an article in Electric Radio Magazine was when I started fooling around with noise canceling back then, uh, 10 years ago. But uh, this is a pretty serious device. And when I built it, I built it with these oversized Type 43 cores. And uh, basically, it, it worked and I used it. So let's uh, do a little bit of noise cancellation with it. Let's hook it up to that simple test equipment that I have, see how deep the nulls are, and then I'm going to let you guys uh, work on this circuit a little bit and maybe uh, straighten it out and uh, it could become a nice little project and far simpler than anything with uh, active systems, uh, transistors, amplifiers, and so on. Something that could be put in a small project box, maybe a small metal box. With only three controls and no power needed, it's bound to make somebody happy. Okay, I have the noise source off the splitter disconnected from the noise input, and both are, are terminated, or at least somewhat terminated. This is a 20 dB pad, and this is 50 ohm load on here. So Then we're setting the output of the generator, 1 megahertz, to a 30 millivolt output. So next I'm going to connect the noise port directly in. Okay. There's already been a drop. Okay, so we're going to try to get a... Ooh, look at that, huh? That's over 20. Let me show you this on the meter. Okay. This is the kind of null we're getting. Again, we started at 30 right here. Absolutely amazing. Working very well in the broadcast band. This passive, passive noise canceller. And uh, all it is is three uh, very large Type 43. It's not that effective at high frequencies, but on the AM broadcast band, for instance, it works quite well. Let's take a listen. Now it's a fairly weak station in back of that noise. So normally you start with the gain fully up. You just put the, the null in the middle. So the noise antenna is in line. So we'll bring, bring the phase down. Now we'll bring the gain down. It doesn't get rid of it completely, but it certainly is allowing that weak station to come through. And the EM broadcast band is a great place to test this. I'm going to disconnect the noise antenna. And the noise is back. Remember, our noise antenna is a 10-foot rod, unmatched, going to bury coax back to the shack. So it's nothing but a 10-foot a rod with a ground rod, coax back to the shack, and there's a few ferrite beads on it to get rid of... Uh, any pickup we might get from the coax. Let's go down to 500 kilohertz. 
500, we have some noise. Let's see if we can do something with that. That's not bad. This is a completely passive canceller. Of course it has loss. Um, we're having to get the gain and the phase set correctly to cancel the noise, but there's still sensitivity there. And if your receiver happens to have a preamp, you can get some of that back. And this performance, again, uh, we're upwards of 35 to 40 dB of rejection with the passive at 5 megahertz. It's quite amazing. Now if we go on the other side, because this is the, the two capacitor model, we should be able to get a null over here too. Not as deep. Okay, not as deep because the larger capacitor is on this side. With the smaller capacitor here, we go over to the other side, and we get the better null. Okay, let's try uh, 10 megahertz. And we get a really good null on this side. With the larger capacitor over here, we also get a null. But it's nowhere near as deep as we get on the other side. Of course, will the meter respond? Can't do it. It's a problem with this meter. There we go. Very impressive. And not quite as good as we got, but certainly in the 30s. Drifting around a little bit, just the pitiful potentiometers. Put this thing in a metal box and I think it would really do something. Uh, down here at 178 kilohertz we have some noise. Um, if I put the noise antenna in, it gets worse. Of course, if I put it in the position that's nulled, some rejection. I don't think it's quite as much as we got up in the broadcast band, but it is helping. Now, if we put it in eating, We can easily hear where we're adding, definitely able to add the noise, and then null to the other way. So what I did was I peaked it on the noise and then flipped it 180 degrees and it takes the noise out. So that's another technique for, for doing uh, canceling at the low frequency. It's interesting. Okay, here at 14 megahertz. And we're still getting a good effect. So. I'm going to declare the passive noise canceller a winning circuit. There's one for the books. So down here at 200 kilohertz, uh, it's using the larger capacitor side to do the null. And uh, I'm getting about 35 dB of rejection. Here at uh, 200 kilohertz. It's using this side. If I go to the other side, which uses the 005 capacitor, can't quite get that deep. Looks like it might be able to do 10 dB with the 005 cap, but with the other cap, we can do pretty well. Um, also, the hybrid in this is a hybrid, but of course it's not properly terminated, so who knows what the impedance is. Uh, the impedance is somewhat controlled because we're using the low value uh, potentiometers, 1K pot potentiometers along with the high value capacitors. The whole thing is a low impedance circuit and that's helping out. So the uneven capacitors on the, uh, on the phase shifter, having the 005 and the, do and the 0 0 .05, 005 and 0 .05 gives you a couple different ranges. It's the larger cap that's helping down here. It's a smaller cap that's hel helping at the higher frequencies. Okay, I'm up here at 18 megahertz with the passive. 
and I've decided to use the receiver as my uh, meter up here to get a little more accuracy. Now when we're in 180 it's not really fair because uh, in this case we're adding the two signals together so there's 3 dB of extra signal getting into the receiver. But let's ignore that for now and just go for the null. I had a little better potentiometer than this old 1K pot. I think you would see we're hitting about 43, which is very similar to what we were getting with the uh, with the AC voltmeter. The problem with the AC voltmeter is it's only accurate up to 15 megahertz. So going above 15 megahertz, it's better to use the receiver. Let's see how it does up in the CB band. Okay, now we're up here in the area that we lovingly call the chicken band. <laughs> the CB section, right? And I'm using the 005 capacitor. You can actually get a null with the 0.05 on the other side, but it's a lot sharper. So maybe I'm overthinking that. Maybe it should just be 2.01s or something like that. But having the two capacitors that are a decade apart, um, I think helped out. Also, the Q of the capacitor, or the quality of the capacitor, leakage through that capacitor is going to make a difference in how deep those nulls are. So, when you guys get a hold of this thing, improve the layout. Put it in a metal box, use better potentiometers than I'm using, I think it's going to come out to be a beautiful little project. Okay, it wouldn't work, it shouldn't work, and so on, but it does. So I hope you enjoyed this little teaser video. Just uh, something to consider. A totally passive noise-canceling system.